there's a demand almost invariably for carpenters and uh, for electricians and plumbers and air conditioning, people like that, drywall subs. These are people that are in demand all the time. Hi guys, welcome to The Village. My name is Bonnie. I create content around careers, education with a dose of reality check. If you are new to this village, a warm welcome to you. If you are returning, thank you. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Guys, today we have Mr. Robert Lama. He is an author of The Importance of High School Vocational Training. That's what we are chatting about today. He is a constructability specialist in a, a well-known construction company in Los Angeles. Okay, so that's who we are chatting to today. So right now, let me welcome Mr. Robert Lama. Hi, Robert. Uh, how are you? Welcome to our village. Uh, we call this space a village because uh, it's a place where um, young people and young professionals and even parents uh, they can get um, some assistance, some information. So this is why we call it a village. Uh, welcome to our village. Well, thank you so much, and I appreciate you inviting me. Okay, yeah. So now, um, Robert, um, do I call you Robert or Rob? No, Robert's fine. That's good. <laughs> it's good. Okay. So I see uh, here from your book, um, I've just been telling my audience about your book, uh, the book that you wrote. Um, are you someone who's anti-degrees or you are, uh, you are just flexible in your approach? No, I think what happened here was uh, when, I, when I went to high school and I got into the ninth grade, it was when I was getting ready to go into the 10th grade was when I realized that the school offered vocational programs. So mm. it, it was that reason that I decided to take vocational because I had to work every day after school from 3.30 to 11.30 every night so that I could uh, make enough money so that I could uh, pay for my own rent, my own food, and my own clothes while I went through high school for all mm. three years. Mm. Okay. So, but um, when it comes to maybe your kids, your your relatives, do you just show them these roots of vocational training or you are flexible? Like, uh, even if they want to do their degrees, it's cool. Because the last thing well, we, we want is for someone who's looking at this and think, oh, maybe this gentleman um, doesn't approve of degrees, you know. So that's what I was trying to find out, that um, what are your thoughts on degrees compared to vocational training? Yeah. Well, I have no problem with all of my friends that I know that have college degrees. I get along yeah. great with them. My uh, my experience has been, and I knew from very early on that I would never be able to go to college because I didn't have the money or, mm -hmm. in some cases, I didn't have the ability to get to college because of the work I had to do at every day just to earn a living to keep myself uh, with mm -hmm. a rent and my food and my, my clothes paid for. So mm -hmm. vocational training was a blessing for me. <laughs> okay, so it says here yeah, part of your job is to review new project drawings and advise architects and engineers. So I'm just interested in knowing how does this work? Because I know in my country, uh, someone who doesn't have a degree advising people with degrees, you know, uh, it's not something you really find that. So how has it been for you? How does it work? Well, the way that works was I, I had uh, three years of uh, vocational training. My first year was in landscape planning and engineering, which was survey and learning how to read topo maps. The uh, 10th and 11th grade, I, I mean, 11th and 12th grade, I studied uh, land, uh, architectural drafting. So mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was through that experience 
that I got a job right out of high school to work for an architect for four years. So after mm. I worked for him for four years, I decided I wanted to get in construction because I love to be outside and not necessarily inside all the time. So <laughs> it was the, it was my experience that uh, over the years that I learned how that I knew enough about construction that a lot of the architects and engineers that were drawing the drawings that I'm working on now, mm. they're not that familiar with some of the technology that I have behind me and the know-how. So what I do when I review the drawings, I'm looking mm -hmm. to see if there's anything that could be improved upon which would uh, improve the schedule or mm -hmm. improve the cost of the project. Because that's why I'm in on the front end of the jobs, not, not actually building them anymore. I'm on the front mm -hmm. end, and that's what I do is to help uh, my construction company to figure out what's the best way to build these and if there's anything that uh, I'm seeing on the drawings that could be improved. That's that's exactly right. Okay. You know what? Uh, I'm in South Africa, as you may know, of, already know, of course, uh, it's 6 in the morning. And I know it's um, 9, is it 9 p.m. your side? Because we're in California. Yes, it's 9 o'clock. And we started our conversation. Okay. 9 o'clock okay. in the evening. Nine o'clock in the evening. Okay, so you know, um, someone watching this might think, "Oh, you got all these uh, opportunities because you are a white male," and they might, you know, for someone who's in South Africa, they might think, "Ish, maybe that's not uh, possible for me because I'm not white or because I'm not a male." Yeah. Well, when I went through uh, vocational training. I had lots of different uh, uh, religions and, and uh, race, races of people working there with me. So it wasn't okay. like it was just for white people. And uh, okay. I, I've worked all of my whole life. Uh, I've worked with uh, different trades, different people with different uh, races and different uh, religions. And it's never, never, ever bothered me. Okay. So you'll say... Um you didn't get the opportunities because you are a white male. You've worked with people from other races as well. So that's what you are saying in summary. Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I, I got my training because I w went out and worked every day after school to earn money so that I could go to school. Otherwise, I would not have been able to go. And it has nothing to do with race or religion. It's just that okay. I enjoyed and wanted to do what I did and in high school and learn what I could in my vocational program. Mm, okay. My next question was going to be, uh, did someone uh, encourage you to go this route or it's something that you just thought on your own? As much as we had the exposure at school, but um, did you purely do it because you had to take care of your, yourself? Yeah, I did everything on my own. I had nobody guiding me, nobody mm. helping me make decisions. I did mm. everything on my own, and uh, I, I was always looking for something that, that allowed me to learn something new that I didn't know before yesterday. I want every day to be a new day of learning. Mm. Okay. Do you find that if you are kids, uh, taking this route, because uh, I read somewhere that uh, a lot of schools, uh, including in my country, but a lot of schools in the U.S., they've removed uh, some of these uh, subjects. Uh, do you find that there is a decline there? Um, what's happening? Well, I think in some areas they have declined, and this is part of why I wrote the book, is I mm -hmm. wanted to... Uh, I wanted uh, the federal government, I wanted states and local uh, school uh, people to understand there's a lot of kids in every school, not just just any one school, but every school has kids that aren't going to go to college. So what are you doing to help them? And there's no other better choice than a vocational mm. program if they offered that. So that's what I'm trying to promote. Uh, mm -hmm. with the local government and uh, the cities here in the United mm -hmm. States. Okay. They say um, some of them is due to lack of funding. 
Um, that's why they are removing um, some of these programs from the high schools. I think that's probably very true. I think that uh, the different uh, school programs throughout the United States, some of them don't have as much money as others. I know the mm -hmm. ones that I went to back in Washington, D.C., around Maryland and Virginia, those mm -hmm. uh, vocational programs are still existing, and they're very, very, uh, you know, recommended and powerful. Okay. Why do most uh, trade schools in the U.S. private? Uh, why are they not mostly owned by government? Well, that's that's what they should be. They should be owned by the the schools should own them, and uh, teach teach these uh, kids while they're in the tenth, eleventh, and twelfth grade. And mm. uh, the federal government is the one that could do make the most impression uh, throughout the United States, not just the cities or the local uh, school, uh, you know, agencies. Mm. Because I know here in South Africa, uh, colleges where you can do your vocational training, it's owned by government, and most of it is funded by government. But I, I, I see you had no debts. When you finished uh, your training, you had no debts, which is uh, fantastic. So the routes that you take, it might look like a solution, especially for someone who does not have the means, you know. So why do you think most people, they will still opt to go for a four-year degree. That's my question. Well, I think, uh, I think in most cases, the families, uh, first of all, would like to have their child go to college, thinking that that's the best way to get the best uh, both training. And at the same time, when, when they get out of school, they have a better opportunity to earn mm -hmm. more money than any other mm -hmm. way would be going through college. Uh, mm. to me, I, I, uh, I encouraged my daughter to go to college, which she did. Mm. And I did that because I figured, well, if there was a vocational training that she was interested in, she didn't express it or show it. So she okay. wanted to go to college and all I did was encourage her. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, that's fair. That's fair enough. Okay. So um, for a parent who's watching this, because now we are talking about parents, about parenting, I'm a parent myself. Um, what do you want them to take from this book? Uh, you've already uh, told us why you wrote the book, what you are trying to achieve. But for a parent or a young uh, Robert somewhere sitting, what do you want them to take from this book? Well, I think what I'm trying to promote, uh, particularly the parents and, and the children that are in, in the going into the ninth grade, getting ready to go into potentially vocational programs, is uh, I, have, I had a chance to learn something that I would not have had a chance to if I didn't have vocational training. And mm -hmm. vocational training uh, provided... Uh, the, uh, the ability for me to get out in both for architectural drafting for four years for an architect. And then when I got into construction, I was mm. well prepared to understand drawings and how to read them and how to uh, build from them. So that's mm. what promoted me and helped me in my career. Wow. I saw that um, you got your first job. You got your first job straight from high school. Do you think that's still possible for youngsters today with everything that's going on in the world with the economy? Do you still think it's possible for someone to just get their first job straight from high school? Because that's, that's how it happened for you. Yeah, I think uh, depending on the, the trade that they take in high school vocational programs, uh, <clears throat> for instance, if you're taking up how how to repair automobile engines and transmissions at the mm. end of three years of training, you can get a job almost with any car manufacturer uh, that uh, or repair shop or new a new automotive uh, automotive shop. Mm. They're looking for people like that. They want those people to come in, and they're willing to pay them a little bit more than you would get if you were just 
learning at the beginning and there as like an apprentice starting in mm-hmm. in the uh, uh, let's say the shop uh, on day one when you've already got three years of experience at three hours a day that's mm-hmm. valuable to these people that that are looking for high school vocational training people mm-hmm. We do have a program like that here in South Africa as well, but you don't really do it in your school, in a high school. You do it in college, but you can leave high school in ninth grade, in grade nine, and then you go to uh, to college. I think grade nine or grade 10, and then you can go to college and then you start your training. So we do have programs like that uh, in South Africa as well. Um, so from your book, I see you've, uh, I, I was even, pro- I was even looking at the pictures. You've worked in a lot of construction projects around, uh, California, or should I say LA? Yeah, California, let's say, uh, California, including the, the homes of, um, celebrities. Uh, I noticed one, which was a, a project with, um, the world renowned, um, TV producer, Mr. Aaron, the late Mr. Aaron Spelling, uh, which right. project was more uh, challenging? Maybe it made you doubt your capabilities a bit because I see you've done a lot, even internationally in China and India. So in all your 64 years of experience and working in various projects, which one made you maybe doubt your skills a bit? I don't think I had a job in my 64 years that doubted Mm. what I was doing. I think what I did, what was so uh, amazing about the construction trades for anybody that gets into construction is Mm. on every job you get on, you learn something new. It goes on and on. Every every job becomes something new that you learn, Mm. and it's extremely valuable. Okay. (laughs) Guys, please don't forget to like and share this video, okay? And let me know in the comment section if you have any questions for Mr. Robert Lamar. Uh, you would watch this video, especially around the construction industry uh, in the U.S. If there are things that you want to know, maybe you want to move that side. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about salaries because someone might think, oh no, if maybe I go like the college routes, I want to pay up better pay uh, compared to someone that didn't go to university. So now, um, what what do you think in terms of earnings? Uh, do you feel like people who went the vocational uh, or trade routes, um, they have opportunity to earn well and live well, but let's just say things were good. Um, do you think um, it's you can earn well? Well, I think that uh, as far as salaries go, I, <clears throat> there it depends on what city in the United States you're you're living or working in, because uh, okay. areas a uh, city like Los Los Angeles and San Francisco, you uh, you could be earning in construction, you could be earning anywhere between uh, eighty dollars an hour up to maybe a hundred and twenty dollars an hour, depending on your skills and where you're located. Mm. So it does vary where you're located. But uh, okay. there most most construction trades uh, that are like in the union here, most of those are in the 80 to 120,000 or $120 an hour. Okay. So do artisans in the in the US work a lot of overtime cuz that's what we find here? that a lot of people in the trade space, they do a lot of overtime. <laughs> um, for them, you find um, that the basic salary is decent enough, but they make more money when they do a lot of overtime and some of it goes to the government through the taxes, uh, through the tax. Uh, so do you find that in the US as well, where people, they work, uh, they do a lot of overtime? No, they they don't encourage overtime unless there's a job that's being uh, expedited and they need to get it done in a quick and or, or in quick order. Only then would you see people getting overtime in. It's not just uh, you don't just volunteer for overtime 
It has to be on a project that's requiring it to be built faster than normal. So instead of a mm -hmm. five day a week, you're working six days a week. That's mm -hmm. unusual. Okay, okay, I see. So how is the construction industry right now um, in the US? Because for us in South Africa, uh, it took a decline um, after the 2010 World Cup era. You know, you find that a lot of big companies, uh, they left uh, South Africa, uh, the big investors. So how is the construction industry in the U.S. right now? Well, we're, to be honest with you, we're quite slow right now. And the reason for it is the interest rates are so high that uh, developers are holding back on starting new projects. Uh, if okay. you have a project that's already underway, that's okay. But if you are looking for a new project, we have a lot of new jobs we're looking at, but none of them are starting because of the interest rates are too high. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we are in a similar situation. Are there any avenues that you can share with our village? Uh, maybe for those who wish to go and work abroad uh, in the U.S. or maybe Canada um, to uh, it, within the, the space of uh, artisanship? Well, I think, you know, of course, the only thing that I can recommend is construction because that's what I've done. And there's a okay. lot of trades within the construction business that people can do. And there's a demand almost invariably for carpenters and uh for electricians and plumbers and air conditioning, people like that and drywall subs. These are people that are in demand all the time. We're actually running short on a lot of these trades. And when we want to hire somebody, we find out that they don't have enough people on their staff to manage mm -hmm. the jobs we're looking for to build. So it mm -hmm. makes it difficult to pick uh, subcontractors that have enough people to, to manage the jobs we have right now. Mm, okay, I see. I see. Uh, we, we're making a note of that. Uh, so in closing, what advice would you give parents um, who have children that they can see that they are gifted with their hands? You might find the child maybe still in fifth grade um, or, you know, the younger, the, the lower grades. What advice can you give them? Well, I think that if they have a talent that they're good at and they enjoy doing it, whether it's sewing or building, uh, like I did when I was younger, I was building uh, uh, carpentry. I had all the tools I needed and had mm -hmm. a chance to build almost anything I wanted. So I would say that I would uh, evaluate the child and see just what is, uh, he likes to do and can you encourage him to do that? And what would be the benefit? Is there something in your community that he could benefit from? Or does he have to leave home and go to another state or another area in order mm. to, to uh, be able to do what he really enjoys doing? So mm. that's, that's always, that's a, that is always an issue. And we have what we call trade schools. But trade schools, you could learn almost anything you're looking for, but trade schools cost money. And you usually mm -hmm. do that after you've, gotten, after you re, you know, gotten out of uh, the 12th grade of high school. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we go to 12 grades. At the end of 12 grades, you either go to college or, in some cases, a lot of people go to trade schools. And that's where they pay for that instead of having vocational training. They've had a chance mm -hmm. to go to trade schools and learn the same things you would learn in high school in vocational training, but not have to pay for anything. Big <laughs> okay. difference. Yeah. And for a young uh, Robert sitting, maybe they are watching this, they are thinking, you know what? I'm really good with my hands, but maybe my friends are going to laugh at me thinking, oh, no, you don't want to go to university. You want to do these dirty jobs, you know? <laughs> Because that's how sometimes it is um, in my country that young people, um, it's getting better now, but there was a point where young people didn't want uh, these roots. They thought it's for people who are not educated. You know, it's not a cool, it's not a cool thing to do. 
what can you say to that person who's thinking, I think I'm more like this guy, you know, but it's not cool. They think it's not a cool thing to do. What can you say to them? Well, I would tell you this. Uh, I have always enjoyed what I'm doing. So mm. it didn't matter where I was, what job I was on. I think the thing that, that drove me the hardest was the fact that I in, have always enjoyed what I'm doing. And I think that uh, life, life today is uh, there's so many kids get involved in jobs they don't like and mm. they're not happy. And to, to, for me to tell you anything at all would be find something that you enjoy doing no matter mm. what it is. Don't worry about how much money you're making. Just remember that if you're happy doing it, it'll make you happy the whole your whole life. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks. Oh, wow. Hey, you know, that those words, they come from 64 years of experience, guys. <laughs> Please, guys, don't forget uh, to like and share this video with someone that might need it. And also drop some comments for Robert. Uh, I know he will come back and watch this video. Uh, he will come back and see your comments. So do drop uh, your comments uh, for him, okay? So where do we find your book? Like that's, that's what now we are more interested in. Where do we find the book? I will have the link guys in the description box where you can click and get the book. But I want um, Robert to tell us now in his own words, the book, uh, the name okay. of the book, and where to find it. Amazon Books, and you say, The Value of High School Vocational Training. Put the mm. title of my book in, and that will come up and tell you how to get a copy of my book. Wow. Okay. okay. No, guys, I will have the link, uh, the direct link uh, to Amazon, um, where you can just click, and then it will take you straight <laughs> To the book. Uh, Robert, I know we have to prepare for bed now. Uh, my day just started. <laughs> uh, it's half past <laughs> six just... now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, thank you so much for popping in and sharing uh, some wisdom with us. Um, thank you. I have, we have to let you go now. Okay, well, I thank you so much for having me on your program. It was, it was a pleasure for me mm -hmm. to to talk with you okay okay thanks bye <laughs> okay guys we've come to the end of this video with uh, the author of the importance of high school vocational training mr robert lama his book is available on amazon guys i will drop the link in the comment section and also in the description box parents get it um for your kids or you can get it for yourself Young professionals, if maybe you are a bit confused about your career and you need some inspiration, this book is the one for you. Otherwise, guys, I will see you on the next one. Let me know what other professions or professionals would you like me to interview in this village.